Today we are not reviewing a car, we are talking about cars in general. And I'll be sharing some car buying tips and mistakes to avoid when you are shopping for a car. You know, car dealers are like pathogens. Every time you think you got them figured out, they mutate to enhance their pathogenicity. They sell cars every day, so they have tons of tricks they use to screw people. So there's this new trend that I've noticed that some dealers I won't mention. If you're shopping around for a demo or a pre-owned car, you may come across cars with no prices and that's the trick. All the other cars will have a price displayed on the windscreen, but one or two cars will just be there with no price. And when you ask the price from the salesman, they give you an inflated amount. Then when you check the dealer's website, you find that the car is going for lower than what the salesman is telling you. They tried to pull this stunt on me at different dealers for about three times and it didn't work. Cause me, I ask important questions until you expose yourself. So if you come across a used car with no price, check the dealer's website to confirm whether the price you are getting from the salesman is accurate. But my friends are also famous for not putting prices on their products and just inflating them. I once went to this other shop looking for a phone charger and I was like, hey my man, how much is a charger here? He was like, no, charger I give you cheap, 450. I was like, oh, my man, me I don't have 450. I was like, okay, tell you what, I give you 400. Currently 400 here work in Ion. Okay, 400 I give you two charger. I was like, this Moran. So now I must pay 400 for two chargers, but I only want one. Pay meal. But of course I didn't say that out loud. Guess how much this Corolla is going for? I'll check your answers in the comment section. Now let's talk about the issue of interest rates. Linked or fixed? Which one should you opt for? While you think about that, let me tell you a short story. So around March last year, I financed the Polo GTI and I was offered an interest rate of 7.27% linked or 9.47% fixed. And before we continue with my story, let's first talk about Mamaga Snow's friend. And for the purpose of this video, we'll call her Litab, but that's not her real name. So Litab was looking for a car and she was only willing to spend around 5,000 rands per month. And the 5k was supposed to cover both the car loan installment and insurance. Mukel was made in love with the Suzuki Palino because her friend is also driving a Palino. That's mistake number one. Okay, sharp. She tried to finance a brand new Palino GL Auto and she was approved by Standard Bank. They offered her a variable interest rate of 18%. That's as good or as bad as buying a car with a credit card. Unsecured loan vibes. The prime lending rate was still at 10.75%, so at 18%, she was charged 7.25% above prime. And that's insane. But kind of justified in this case, and let me explain. Apparently, Litawa bought an iPhone using a credit card back when she was still in Varsity and never paid back the money. That messed up her credit profile, and the bad record is still in her profile even today. I don't understand why credit providers are offering credit to unemployed students. That's just reckless lending. They're setting people up for failure. It's a dead trap. So my input was very simple. I said, my sister, look man, you can't take the 18% deal because it's just ridiculous. Moreover, you have no business buying a Suzuki Palenio GL Auto because it costs over 250,000 rands. If you are serious about sticking to your 5,000 rands monthly budget, you should look for a car that costs between 150 and 180,000 rands, preferably a pre-owned one, because that way you will borrow less money, therefore your installment will be lower. She said, okay, cool. Guess which car did she buy? A brand new Suzuki Palenio GL Auto. I was kind of disappointed, but it's cool. Because my business is not to tell people what to do with their money. I hate that. And some of you send me DMs and emails and be like, Hi MJ, I love your content and I'm a big VW fan. My budget is 280,000 rands. Which car should I buy between a Kia Picanto, Renault Sandero and a Polo TSI? Like bro, you already said you are a VW fan. Why are you wasting my time with these questions? Because chances are you already made a decision and you are just coming to me for a stamp of approval. And no matter what I say, you will go ahead and do whatever you want anyway. So just buy what you love. But I don't say that because I'm a nice person. I normally ask you questions that will lead you to the answers you want. Without me necessarily telling you which car to buy. There's another lady who came to me with a car finance offer of 16.20% linked or 17.90% fixed. 
The whole deal was full of red flags, it was just a mess. But at least she was open-minded and she followed my guidelines. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'll save your cousin one day. Or your parents. There's people who are twice my age who come to me with car-related depression, but that's a topic for another day. So back to my Polo GTI and the issue of linked versus fixed rate. I was initially offered 7.27% linked or 9.47% fixed. And after a bit of negotiating, they said 7% linked or 9.47% fixed. With a linked rate, your car installment changes when there's a change in repo rate, but with fixed rate, it remains the same. I knew very well that the repo rate was going to increase, but I chose 7% linked because I have a high risk appetite and I do a financial stress test before making any financial commitment to see if I'll be able to survive the worst case scenario like an upward repo rate cycle or losing a source of income. Also, I always pay off my cars within a year because I buy cars I afford, not cars I qualify for. The GTI account is closed and I don't regret choosing the linked rate. But if that account was still active today, I was going to be sitting at an interest rate of 11.25%, which is higher than the 9.47% fixed rate I was offered, and that's where a fixed rate makes sense. Generally, a linked rate is cheaper, but very risky because the economy is unpredictable. One minute everything is going well, then the next minute there's a pandemic, endless load shedding, and Ukrainians are fighting with Russians. A fixed rate on the other hand is safer, but seems ridiculous in the short term because it's usually worked out based on the worst case scenario, which is in some cases unlikely to happen. So for short term loans, a link rate is more attractive, but long term you are safer with a fixed rate. But then again, it all depends on your risk appetite. Our prime lending rate is currently sitting at 11.75%. And we all know very well that average South Africans are unlikely to be offered car loans at exactly 11.75%. So according to you, what's the cut-off interest rate when buying a car? Like, can you buy a car at an interest rate of 16, 17 or 18 percent? Let me know in the comments. And if your car is still under finance, tell us your interest rate. Don't suffer in silence. The next big mistake is financing unnecessary optional extras. We covered this topic before, but people are still getting screwed. Look, salesmen will always squeeze in all sorts of extras when selling you a car, and those extras are good for them, not you. Here's an example. This poor customer was buying a low mileage pre-owned Kia Picanto and had a deposit of 50,000 rands. The salesman pumped a deal with an extended warranty, two-year policy for small dents and scratches, a goddamn tie and rim warranty policy for two years or 50,000 kilometers, and a tracking device with a monthly subscription fee of 200 rands without properly informing the customer. The extra swallowed almost half of the deposit, and that's how people end up borrowing 300,000 rands to buy a 250,000 rands car, and be shocked when they are left with a huge shortfall when trading in their car at a later stage. So you have to ensure that your deal has no extras that you never requested. The next mistake is buying a car you qualify for, but can't really afford to maintain. So before buying a car, please do some research around the cost of maintaining that particular car. Check how much it costs to replace one tire, brakes and other wear and tear components. Insurance is also a very important aspect because high-risk cars are generally expensive to insure, so you should be prepared for that. Some cars are cheap, but maintenance is a nightmare. You'll be shocked the day you are slept with a huge bill for minor repairs. Then there's test drives. You should never underestimate the importance of a test drive, irrespective of whether you are buying a brand new or a used car. And I know some of you are thinking, what's the point of test driving a new car? Well, when it comes to driving dynamics, some cars are not always as good as they look. They are nice from a distance, vrupa vrupa, but once you get to live with them, you start regretting due to maybe a high suspension or horrendous fuel consumption. Then some cars are just overhyped, but they make almost zero sense when it comes to normal day-to-day -day driving, and that's a topic for another day. 
The last point for today is manual versus automatic. Which transmission should you go for? Normal people know very well that automatic is the one, but petrol heads will always say manual. And if you listen to petrol heads one day, you will end up on a wheelchair. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in a Mzansi context.